To some, he's a hero, a champion of science and reason on a crusade to tear down the foundations of religious belief. Science is wonderful. Science is beautiful. To others, he's aggressive, a militant, a Rottweiler that's dismissive of questions that many believe exist beyond the realm of natural science. You guys can't tell me how it all got here. One thing is for sure, Richard Dawkins does not back down from his scrap. In his best-selling books like The God Delusion, he sets out his often controversial beliefs that the Bible is fiction, faith is a virus, and God is about as real as the tooth fairy. His arguments against faith, any faith, by the way, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Star Wars, use the false Luke, derived from Darwin's theory of evolution. Richard himself spent years studying animal behavior and evolutionary biology. Now he's teamed up with his friend Lawrence Krauss, an award-winning physicist and cosmologist, as in the study of the origin and fate of the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, the dynamic duo of science. For a new film that premiered at the Hot Dogs Festival called The Unbelievers. What a disgusting idea. It also features some pretty familiar faces from outside the world of science. Facts, if you're rational, should change your beliefs. Please welcome back to the program, Richard Dawkins! Good to see you again. And so here we go. The, um, you've been on the show a couple times before. Do you think it's been, hasn't been that long since The God Delusion, but long enough that you could sort of see an arc? How do you think the conversation has shifted, or has it? The figures in... Uh, I think all over the Western world are show a, a decline in religion, certainly in Christianity, uh, and even in the United States. Um, the United States is lagging far behind the rest of, 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 of the first world, but nevertheless, it's going in the right direction, and um, younger people especially are giving up religion. You, you don't seem to approach this from an, an emotional angle at all. Is that accurate? I... Well, I'm, I primarily love truth, so I'm, I pr primarily approach it from a scientific angle. But I do get emotional about, um, I think, what's rather wicked, which is misleading children. I mean, I do get quite emotional about misleading children about the truth about the world and about the universe. I think that's, that the truth about the world is so beautiful, so elegant, so fascinating, that to deprive children of that and teach them some silly old fairy tale instead uh, is just very tragic, and that does make me annoyed. Did you equi equi equate it to, child, to some sort of child abuse? The idea of teaching kids religion early? I have said that teaching children about hell is child abuse, mm -hmm. and I've said that labeling children with the religion of their parents when they're too young to know is child abuse. Calling a child a Catholic child when the child is only three. The child doesn't know what it thinks about the virgin birth and, and stuff like that at the age of three. Right. So it's wicked to call it a Catholic child. But we all do it. We all pay lip service to the idea that you can label a child as having the same opinions as its parents. And that, I think, is wicked, yes. People can't believe what they want because everybody's entitled to that. So what, what, where... Everybody's entitled to believe, I suppose, what they want, but they're not entitled to claim this fact. I mean, it, 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 it is a fact that the universe is billions of years old. And so you, you, you don't have to respect people's belief if their beliefs are just balmy. Do you believe that their beliefs are dangerous? Uh, well, dangerous is putting it a little bit strongly. I think they're pernicious. They're pernicious to education. Um, they're pernicious to childhood. They're pernicious to the appreciation of what a wonderful universe this is that we live in and how wonderful it is to be equipped with a brain to understand it and with centuries of of civilization, centuries of education, centuries of science, to teach us about it. I mean, we live in a privileged time, the 21st century, when so much is known, and it's so tragic that 40% that of the population of the United States are, are living in the Bronze Age. On Twitter sometimes, I mean, I, I follow you on Twitter, and sometimes you get into it with people. Have you ever had moments where, like, late at night, you're just, you're picking a fight that you don't need to be in? Have you had <laughs> so that? Yes. I suppose, yes. <laughs> 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 Where does that come from, that kind of...? It comes from a love of truth, to be... I mean, that sounds sanctimonious, but it's absolutely true. I'm sure you've heard that some people have said you're Islamophobic. What do you make of the criticism? Islamophobia is just a nonsense word that's been invented as a, as a propaganda uh, exercise. Um, there is certainly a political um, and very reprehensible prejudice against Muslims in Britain, I dare say in Canada as well. And that's very reprehensible, but that does not mean that anybody who criticizes Islam on intellectual grounds is Islamophobic. I mean, that's just an absurd misuse 
of a sort of bogey word. And what's your position on the Scientologists? <laughs> they are the most litigious people in the world. <laughs> The Scientologists have even keeping Richard from saying anything. <laughs> All right, um, I want to play this clip here because you have been on The Simpsons, which is pretty exciting, right? And you've also been in Doctor Who. But here's a moment where I don't think you were in it, but you were definitely a part of this particular broadcast. You see, children, life has the amazing ability to change, to adapt, like changing us to the point that we walk upright. So you are saying that we're all related to monkeys? Well, yes, basically we are. I never you say see basically. monkeys at the zoo? They crap in their hands and throw it at people. Miss Garrison, this isn't theory. It is scientific fact. What about the fact that by believing this crap, you're gonna go to hell? Doesn't that bother you a little? Actually, no, because I'm an atheist. So you never say the word basically. The word basically has become a kind of non-word that's used like er uh, or um. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean anything at all. It's <laughs> lost its meaning totally. I never, ever use it. Stick around. We're going to carry on a conversation uh, with Richard. We're going to bring in uh, uh, his partner in Unbelievers, Lawrence Cross. Uh, stick around. That's coming up right after this. <laughs> Up next, according to Richard, everyone is an atheist. We'll find out what he means by that next. What's more important in some sense, if you had a choice, which is to explain science or destroy religion? Oh, I think they go together because I, I mean, destroy religion makes it sound negative. Yeah. To me, it's a positive thing. Science is wonderful. Science is beautiful. And uh, religion is not wonderful, it's not beautiful, it gets in the way. That's a clip right there from the film, which is called The Unbelievers. The two guys in that conversation, one, of course, being Richard Dawkins. The other person is Lawrence Krauss. Please welcome Lawrence. What's uh, I mean, what's the experience like to going on the two of you doing this and making a film? It's uh, it's been fun. It's been it's been a gas to go around the world, and it and and it, it's fun to have our conversations because uh, we have had these unscripted conversations on unmoderated conversations, which is really important. I think the first one we did was really Richard, who said, you know, we really don't need a moderator because they get in the way. Forgive me, yeah, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not and, a moderator. Yeah, yeah. I'm a facilitator. Yeah, exactly. Very different. You know? <laughs> and uh, and each one is different, and and it's it's a challenge, but it's also kind of fun. And we and I certainly get things out of it and learn things, and I, I hope Richard does too. But. I'm asking this on a personal level, so you guys can help me explain this to my friends. When my friends say they're not religious but they're spiritual, what are you supposed to say to them? Spiritual is a nice word, and we're all spiritual in some sense. I mean, Lawrence and I are both spiritual. Carl Sagan was spiritual in the sense that we, we look up at the stars and we get a lump in our throat and we feel it's wonderful. That's not supernatural, and unfortunately, the religious supernatural lobby has, as it were, commandeered the word spiritual, and with the result that it's probably best not to use it. Uh, but in, in one sense, we are spiritual, yeah. My favorite part of this film is my favorite part about this discussion is that when we finally have to say it, people need to say it out loud, we are insignificant. But people think insignificance is a bad thing. I actually think it's the greatest it's part of this film. It's, yeah. it, it's yeah. what yeah. motivates me, the yeah. idea that, yeah. that, you know, and, and people say that we're arrogant, but, I mean, thinking the universe was created for you is not, you know, I think that's a little, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to yeah. happenstance. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed that we're... Yeah, and, and being part of a sideshow doesn't make, in a random planet in the middle of a random galaxy in the middle of nowhere, just means it's more amazing that we can be here having this conversation, that we're endowed with an intelligence. It means that the meaning in our lives is the meaning we make. And that makes it more powerful, it seems to... I know, we both talked oh, about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, which one of you is the closest to being religious, even on a sub-molecular level? <laughs> Well, I'm, I've called myself a 6.9, which means that, I'm, that I, you, you cannot disprove the existence of any god, but any more than you can disprove the existence of a leprechaun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the point that people don't understand is that people think it's a big issue for scientists. It's not. It's never discussed. God is just irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Never discussed in scientific meetings because... It doesn't, the subject doesn't come up. And uh, the physicist uh, Steven Weinberg has said, you know, most scientists don't think enough about God to even know if they're atheists. All Definitely. right. You guys are friends, right? I hope so. Can you tell me who said these words about friendship? Okay, here's a quote. Lots of people want to ride with you in a limo, but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. Was that Oprah Winfrey or Bill Clinton? 
Ooh, I'd say uh, Bill Clinton. I'd say Bill Clinton. Okay, so that's what I said, but it's actually Oprah Winfrey. Okay, there you I go. Said, but I, I got okay. that wrong. A man's friendships are one of the best measures of his worth. Charles Darwin or Albert Einstein? Einstein. I'd say Einstein. See, I'm, I, we all suck, because it, yeah. was, it was Darwin. <laughs> it was Darwin. This is, I'm the same place. You know that one, yeah. Here's my favorite one. The truth is, everyone is going to hurt you. You've just got to find the ones worth suffering for. Winston Churchill or Bob Marley? I don't know who Bob Marley is, don't Oh, yeah, no, I would actually... I would, okay, listen. I, I, I would, see, no, if you don't know who Bob Marley is, science has failed you, sir. Yeah. We need... <laughs> I would have well, said Bob, Bob Marley. Bob someone. Marley is the correct answer. Okay, good, I'm going to make you a mixtape. Of Bob Marley. Tell me who he is. Bob Marley is with, with his great singer, um, a reggae artist reggae, who, reggae yeah, reggae who, oh, okay. who's been called a prophet, which might explain why you haven't heard of him. Yeah, he's been called a prophet. <laughs> that might do it. So great to see you guys. What a real pleasure, and, uh, and thanks great. for spending the time thanks. with us. Thanks. It was thanks, great. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Always welcome. Lawrence Coates, Richard Dawkins. The film is called The Unbelievers in theaters this year. We'll be right back.